What's going on, everybody? It's Blackjack. Welcome back to Crystalline. I just, I, I saw the worst, the worst meme. It's like, not the worst meme, but somebody just, like, posted this stupid thing. And it was, it was hilarious. Because, you know, the whole, like, video killed the radio star thing. They, they give a list of things that got killed off. And it's like, money killed true love. Makeup killed natural beauty. And I'm like, listen, it's, it's much of a jaded, a jaded romantic that I am. I'm... St- Still not stupid enough to believe something like money kill true love. That's ridiculous. And also makeup kill natural beauty. No, it, like I don't know where people got this idea that like makeup has never existed past the fa- past like fifty years or something like that. Uh, the biggest example of this is like Cleopatra. That was like in in like the first century BC. So you know, like trust me, if Photoshop existed. 2,000 years ago, motherfuckers have been using that shit like crazy. Technology and everything has advanced, so it's accessible to more people. It's not that these things don't exist. It's that the mainstream will allow you to present an image of what is, like, perfect and all of that. Um, but that idea is not gone yet. Even though the whole idea, like, and I don't like how it's, like, fetishized either, of just, like, natural beauty normal people use makeup every day normal people use things to take care of their skin it's like a natural part of life anyway like it it just like memes like that bother me because it's like it people are people we're humans it's just like people are more narcissistic nowadays like no it's not people people i guarantee you if people had the power to take selfies with each other they would Especially back in the day, they don't have somebody to have to take a, a, a photo of them. They can just apply a filter and just make themselves as beautiful as they want. Motherfuckers like the fucking kings and queens would have been all over that shit. So it's ridiculous to think that, you know, it's just a nowadays problem. No, it's just, it's, you're seeing it more because information spreads a lot faster and we're way more open than we've ever been. Anyway, about five, about after five days of traveling, we finally arrive in Bridgewick. I really wish I had more alcohol. The cobblestone streets are paved and well kept. As we pass through the marketplace, I hear the growing voices of peddlers advertising their wares. More traditional shop fronts line the streets, and a few shopkeepers chase away any tent set up in front of their stores. The pongo buries his face into my neck as we walk through. People bustle through about as they shop. Everything about this town feels strangely ordinary if i didn't know any better i would have wouldn't have guessed there was a dark guild hiding beneath this ordinary facade huh what is it this way seems kind of pleasant what were you expecting something more like a wolf's den vibe honestly hiding someplace unremarkable is a pretty good strategy they don't typically see too much crime here i wonder how much influence they have on the townsfolk here Mm. Uh, probably zero. Well, actually, no, that's not true. Probably very little. Yeah. I'd guess that most of the townsfolk don't even realize that the Brotherhood is even here. I, I said zero, and then I was like, wait, they might have, like, a little, but it's, like, minor, or it's, like, behind the scenes, so they can't really feel it or see it, but it's, like, trace amounts. Even so, I'm not sure I like the idea of just hanging out and playing view like sitting ducks. Maybe we should go to the end until we can figure out what to do next. Zach shakes his head. Too many people might recognize me there. I thought you said the townspeople were innocent. Uh, listen, then the, at an end, those are not towns. Uh, those are not innocent townspeople. They may be, but the inn is a prime target to leave cloaked Brotherhood scouts. They'll most likely recognize Zach and alert the guild that he's here. Correct. Kara frowns, looking worried. That's a good point, which brings up an even larger problem. Where can Zack hide out? It might take a few days to even find a lead. He has to be able to stay and sleep somewhere. Sucks to be you, Zack! I have a contact here. We can ask him if he'll let me lay low for a while. Kara raises her eyebrow. I would, too. Who is it? A friend of a friend. He won't turn us away. Broodman? Zach leads us through the city and pauses in front of a small shop. A sign with a hammer and anvil bangs, uh, hangs, uh, bangs, hangs above the door. This must be a blacksmith's forge. He opens the door and a small bell dings above our heads. Weapons line the wall, their blades winking in the light. 
I can hear the faint sound of a hammer smacking against metal as an orange glow flickers down the hall. We wait a few minutes to see if anyone comes out. When no one does, Zack leads us into the back where we see a man. His face is sweaty, palms are sweaty, mouth spaghetti, and wrought in concentration as he hammers a blade. Sparks fly when he hits it. The constant hammering is making my ears ring. Zack steps out of the doorway, his shadow casting over the man's work. Hey. The man looks up and blinks. Oh, good afternoon. He wakes, he wipes his uh, forehead with the back of his arm and smiles. <sighs> Sorry to keep you waiting. It's usually pretty quiet up front at this time. What can I do for you? Give me a new gun. Are you Adrian? His smile retains on his face so a line of tension creases his brow. I am. Who's asking? Deathslinger. I'm a friend of Damon. Adrian's eyes widen as he lets out a long, slow breath. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. Because he's dead. He always spoke very highly of you. Said the only blade worth having was the one forged by Adrian. Adrian laughs, a deep, throaty rumble. And then he switched to Discharges. Lost out my business when that happened. Hmm. His expression softens as he takes a closer look at Zack. You that boy took him? Although... You're not so much a boy anymore. It's it's very strange, like, listening to this VO. Just because, like, it it sounds, I, I, I don't doubt that, like, his, his voice is naturally a little bit that low, but it, it sounds as if he's down a hallway, which is weird. Zach. Adrian nods. I'm sorry about what happened to Damon. He didn't deserve to go like that. Okay, maybe he's not down a hallway, but there's a weird, like... It sounds like there's a filter. It's... Something about this is off. No. He didn't. Zack lowers his head so his hair falls into his eyes. Zack isn't usually this emotional. Whoever they're talking about, he must have meant a lot to Zack. Anyway, Damon was like a brother to me. And I know how much he cared about you. You wouldn't stop talking about how you were going to be one of the best mercs out there. Maybe rivaling even him. Anything I can do to help, you just let me know. A friend of Damon's is a friend of mine. Yeah, a friend of Matt Damon's is a friend of mine. Zach nods. He takes a moment to recompose himself and then looks back up. I appreciate the offer. In fact, I do have a favor to ask. Hmm. Would it be alright if I lay low here for a while? Blacksmith strokes his chin, smearing suit across his jaw. I notice the skin on his forearms look like it's been melted, and it takes me a moment to realize that they're burn scars. I won't ask why, but can you promise me you won't bring anything back to my shop? I don't need any trouble here. Which means there will be trouble here. I promise you won't be involved at all. Bullshit. He grins a little and nods. Then feel free to stay as long as you need. Thank you. The rest of you going to stay here, too? Yeah, I guess maybe a little bit. I'm not really quite sure yet. Leanna shakes her head. It's a bit crowded in here, and we've got some things to take care of first. <laughs> yeah, go have fun being a loser here, Zach. Maybe I'll steal your girl. Hi. Oh, shit. Why do I keep doing that? Adrian eyes the pongo warily. The pongo shrinks, shrinks from his gaze. Hi. He wobbles over to my legs and hides behind me. Well, actually, the Pongo might stay. You'll be on your best behavior, right? He grins up at me and cuddles against my leg. Boy, boy. Nope. Just in case, I reach for a small crystal stack on the shelves and fish out uh, a handful of coins, which I offer to Adrian. Is it okay if I buy this? He accepts my coins. I offer the crystal to the Pongo, who excitedly snatches it up. He wiggles happily in, in, in a little jiggle dance. Boy, boy. Leanna melts as she watches the Pongo. Oh. He should be good to go and won't touch anything else in the shop. The satisfied Adrian nods. All right, you can stay. Kara touches Zack's arm. We'll be back as soon as we can. Hey. He nods but doesn't say anything. Kara gives him a gentle squeeze. Hey, before we return to the main room. Why am I even upset about this? Well, because Kara's best girl, that's why. Um, but I guess for main character, it wouldn't matter anyway. He's already with Leanna. Uh, we pause before leaving the shop. Once outside, I face the remainder of our party. All right, we've got to find the location of the Cloaked Brotherhood's hideout. It'll make more sense if we split up to find information. It's kind of weird, like... In Ace Academy and in Cowrie After Story, 
I felt connected to the main character. Like, I was speaking through the main character a little bit. Whereas here... I feel uh, strangely, like, disconnected from it a little bit. Agreed. Our best course of action is to investigate in pairs. Mm -hmm. That way, should anyone befall any trouble, they will not be alone. Good thinking. Amy and I will start in the north of the town, while you two start in the south. We'll meet up back here afterwards. Mm -hmm. Once agreed, we split up. Lana and I head off in one direction, while Kara and Amelia go the opposite way. Lana and I pause at the marketplace. I'll scout some of the buildings out around here, and see if I can find any unusual activity. Okay, if you ask around, I can look around out here in the marketplace. She grins. Sounds like a plan. She heads off. I turn around and scan the area. Pass the shady looking group hanging out near the alleyway. Pass the mother with the trowel. Pass the guards. I walk up to a group of people, mostly young guys. They're clustered together, blocking off an alley. Someone must have said something funny because they abruptly burst into laughter. No, they looked at your dumb ass. Hey! Look up at me. What do you want? I don't know, thug one. What do I want? So, a strange going on around these beer parts. Is yeah. anything weird been going on in the sound? The first man narrows his eyes. What do you mean weird? Like people disappearing, crime rates going up, assassins, ninjas. He blinks. What? What? He stalls and waves his hand. Get out of here, kid. We don't know what you're talking about. I walk away from with a soft sigh. Maybe they weren't the best people to ask. All right, mother with the child, obviously. Excuse me. The woman freezes. She stops and turns around. The woman's mouth pulls into a distorted frown. She takes in my leather or leathery armor and the sword strapped to my back. Her eyes guard and wary. She shuffles her and her uh, shuffles her son behind her. What do you want? I'll tell you what I want, what I really would. It. No, never mind. Um, I'm new to town and was wondering if you've noticed anything suspicious. What can you tell me about the Cloaked Brotherhood? I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the town. Her eyes narrow. What about it? I've just moved here a bit ago. Is there anything you think I should know? The woman pauses, her lips flatten to a thin line. Yes. You shouldn't be traveling alone. Great advice. Her grip tightens around her little boy's hand. My stomach clenches. Oh. I shift uncomfortably. Why? Is there anyone strange out here? The woman's mouth clenches shut. Clearly she's not going to answer any more of my questions. If you'll excuse me. Okay, fine. Uh, she elbows her way past me and disappears back into the crowd. Two guards are playing some kind of dice game in front of a fancy looking building and doing some illegal gambling with a route on an iron fence. They don't seem to be keeping a particularly good eye on the town. Excuse me. The guards pause. They look up. Yes? Can we help you? How about that Cloaked Brotherhood? Am I right? Have you guys heard anything about the Cloaked Brotherhood? The Cloaked what? You know, the Cloaked Brotherhood. I know nobody would know what this is. Uh, never heard of them. Right, sorry to bother you. I leave them be. That wasn't as successful as I hoped it'd be. I search for Landa and find her outside of one of the buildings. I, I kind of wonder about something, but I don't think it's worth it. Any luck? She shakes her head. Me neither. Maybe we should head back and see if the others have had more success. Yeah, good idea. We make our way to the blacksmith shop. It looks like Cara and Amelia are already waiting for us. Kara probably figured this out. There you guys are! Kara splits into a bright smile when she sees us. She seems to be in a good mood. I hope this means you found something. You bet. I think I gotta leave. Sweet. I raise my eyebrows, impressed. Really? She nods. I noticed there were a lot of people going in and out of this one area. It might be nothing. Or it could lead us exactly where we need to go. Good. Leanna nods in agreement. That sounds like our best bet. We should grab Zack and get going. Nope! Oh, okay, I guess we are. We meet up with Zack and fill him in on what we found. He straps on his dischargers and together we head out of the shop. The car takes us through a shortcut in the city, hitting more isolated streets. The fewer people who see Zack, the better. She steers us into an alleyway and then turns another sharp corner. Right here. She gestures to a house. I squint at it. It doesn't look any different than any of the other houses in the city. What exactly am I looking at? This place doesn't seem like much, but I've seen people come in and out. 
If this was someone's home, you'd expect to see the same person there all the time. But that's not the case. Let's check it out then. Mm-hmm. There's a man station right outside the home, but Zack easily knocks him out. <laughs> Just, hi, hey, sorry, this your house? Boom. And now I'm going in. As we enter the house, the first thing I see is a rickety dining table and a meager kitchen. Sunlight slices across the floor from a single window. I notice a red flap covering the entrance to what might be another room. Kara walks around the room, testing the floors and walls for any creaking or hollow sounds. She shoves aside a curtain to expose a blank wall. Pushing against a knot in the wood, the wall swings back to reveal a doorway leading to an underground staircase. I wait for Kara to grin or make one of her usual jokes, but she doesn't. Instead, her jaw clenches. She looks nervous. We all stare down into the dark. Let's go. I stiffly nod. We descend down the stairs. Oh, this doesn't look so bad. A, bur a bright light bursts through the dark. At the bottom of the steps, I can hear two male voices. Whoever it is, it sounds like they're laughing and joking with each other. Zack draws his dischargers. Okay. There's a crack and then a, a flash of violet light. The sentry grunts in pain and collapses even before he even has a chance to sound the alarm. I dash down and ready my sword. That escalated quickly. Alrighty. Uh, bing, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bing. Alright. Simple enough. The guard cuts on my face with a sword. I lunge, blocking him with a, spark, a spray of sparks. My manipulator glows and I hack at him again. He cries out, struggling to keep up. The final swing, his sword clatters to the ground. With the sentries disposed of, we step past them and follow the hallway. Zack leads the way as the hall opens up into a large room. It's darkly lit with deep wooden tables. It looks like uh, it looks to be some sort of guild hall. There are all there are alcove areas branching from the main hall, one of which is guarded. If I had to guess, the ledges are probably stored in that room. The others must have come to the same conclusion as we creep closer to get a better look. A floorboard creaks and another bandit hears us. He scrambles for the discharger at his waist, but he's not fast enough. Lena shoots her hand out and a wind gale blasts at him away. Let's go! Uh, we walk away. Sorry, we walk around the bandit sprawled across the floor and follow Zack into the room. A man looks up from uh, looks up at us from behind a desk. He has a shock of red hair and a few scars across his face. You can't be back here. This is for authorized. Mm -hmm. He freezes. The words caught on his lips and his eyes widen. Zack. Heavy pause. Zack's face is taut with shout. It can't shock. be. There. The bear gapes at him. Then his expression melts into a wry smile, and a laugh bubbles out of him. <laughs> of course it's you. It's always you, isn't it? Yeah, Vayr. Who are you? Rare, Raya, Raya. I tried to do it backwards, and it didn't make sense. Zack's face is frozen with shock and confusion. There! You're alive! Yes, and I'm just as surprised to see you, too. Although I really shouldn't be. I should have known better. What are you talking about? Where have you been this whole time? Bear shakes his head. A bit slow on the uptake. Honestly, I expected better from you, Zack, the prodigal son. Zack's jaw clenches. You've been here with the cloaked brotherhood. Yeah, no shit. Bear slides into a slippery grin. There you go. I knew you'd get there eventually. Zack's eyes darken to the color of a storm. Our last mission together. You, me, Damon, and the others. We had to transport the weapons. Seemed easy enough at the time. You were there on the crystal rail with us. But you weren't there when they all got attacked. Veer's mouth curls into a snarl. Apparently, neither were you. No. I was sent to look for you. We thought maybe something happened when you didn't return from scouting. Vayer scoffs. Damon couldn't even trust me to do one thing. He sent you to fix it for me, didn't he? He was worried about you. That's what happens when you're part of a team. Because everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Right, Vayer? Don't give me that bullshit. Vayer's eyes narrow. He grips the back of his chair so hard his knuckles turn white. The words flow out of his mouth like poison, each one more clipped and venomous than the last. Damon only cared about you. The rest of us only mattered in how we compared to you. That's not true! How would you know? I knew Damon. He cared about all of us. 
We were a family. A family. Vayer croaks out a laugh. <laughs> You're still just as naive as before. And if Damon hadn't trusted you as much as he did, maybe he'd still be alive. Ooh, got him. Zach's, Zach's grip on his discharger tightens. You were sent to find me, but you couldn't. Because I'm smarter than you, and always have been. It's too bad Damon wasn't able to see that, but I found people who did. He gestures to the guild around him. If you had caught me, then maybe the attack wouldn't have happened. Maybe the Cloaked Brotherhood wouldn't have secured the weapons and killed everyone on that crystal rail. Damon died because you couldn't complete your mission. Suddenly a loud crack rings in my ears and a flash of purple sparks in my vision. Zack stands with his discharger raised while Vayer clutches at his side. He snarls as he whips out his own discharger and shoots at Zack who deftly dodges it. I snap back to reality. Yup, there goes gravity and pulled out my sword. Leanna and Amelia power up their manipulators as Kara reaches for her daggers. That ain't gonna help you in this situation. Uh, well, apparently. Battle with Vayer, okay. Oh, shit. Oh, um, oh no, it's it's this. Oh, okay, right, because I forget how this is all laid up. Okay, so it's this, 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 this. It is this, 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 this. It is this, 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 this. And there we go, I won. Hooray! I wonder what happens if I lose. Vayer crumbles into a heap and on the ground, gasping. Zach's eyes are a dark abyss as he calmly aims his discharger at Vayer's head. Kara's eyes widen. Zach, what are you doing? He's gonna kill him, duh. My stomach gives an unpleasant twist. Leanna and Amelia look equally as shocked. Zach! Don't do this thing! Y Zach, wait, come back! Zach's gri grip on his discharger tightens. Kara slowly steps towards him. Look at him. He's done. You don't have to do this. The discharger shakes in his hand. Hurt and anger flash across his face. I understand your anger, your pain. But killing him won't make all that pain disappear. It won't bring back your friend. Kara gently touches Zack's arm. Hey, listen, none of this romance shit right now. Don't stoop to his level. You won't be able to come back from it. You really don't know him, do you? He's killed countless people just like I have. You really think one more to his tally will hurt his conscience? Don't be so stupid. Zack doesn't comment. Just do it already. Zack's grip tightens once more as he aims his weapon. My breath catches in my throat and the air is still, still is in taut tension as he seems to freeze. No. He lowers his weapon. Vayer ex exhales hard and laughs. He's gone weak. Maybe we aren't as much alike as I thought. <laughs> hey, maybe you should sound a little bit more <gasps> dead. You're right. Because I'm nothing like you. I don't murder the people I care about. Oh, that's cute. You care about Vayer. I, I ship it. Zack X Vayer. What? You were my brother for the longest time, and family is complicated. You'll have to live with what you did, and maybe it won't be today or tomorrow. But someday, your decisions will come back to haunt you. Mm-hmm. Vayer scoffs. That soft heart is what got Damon killed, and what will eventually kill you, too. As he launches the last shot, Zack swings his charger around, crunching... Into Vayer's temple, he slumps to the ground. The encroaching quiet seeping in seems to bring life back to us. Zack breathes hard as he stares at the body on the ground. You did the right thing. He doesn't say anything. I glance over at Leanna. Her uh, blue eyes watch Zack closely, her mouth a thin line. I wonder what she's thinking about. Hey. She glances at me and gives me a small smile. Hey. Hey, we almost watched someone die. That was crazy, right? You okay? Yeah, I feel for Zack. It must have been really hard knowing that someone you trusted could have betrayed you. Yeah, I won't do that. Yeah. I heard a soft rustling and see Amelia rummaging through the books. Amy? She looks up. You've been looking at books this whole time? Yes. Are you sure now is a good time to be doing that? The goal of this mission is to acquire the ledger which contains information regarding Kara's family. Is it not? Her voice wavers as she tries to put on a brave face. It is evident that these books are the ledgers which we seek. To find the specific book, we would need to require a lengthy amount of time which we do not have. I would advise all of us to assist in this function. Fine, we'll read books. Yeah, but 
Maybe this is her way of coping with the situation? I gesture towards Zack. He shakes his head. Amy's right. We need to find the ledger and get out of here. God damn it. He shakes out of Kara's grasp and begins pulling out the books. What date should we be looking for, Kara? Oh, uh, let me think. Kara heads over to Zack while Leanna and I jump in to help. Once we know what dates to search for, we start. We get started on sorting the books. We work tirelessly, glancing behind us every so often to see if anyone's noticed us. Then Zack wordlessly hands Kara a ledger. Her eyes search his as he takes the book with trembling hands. Is that the ledger we require? Kara nods but doesn't read it. We wait awkwardly, but Kara doesn't move. Why don't we just take it with us? We can read it at a more fitting time. Uh, right boy. now, we might have to get out of here before more of the Brotherhood finds us. We have the plot point! Yeah. Kara shakes her head to clear her thoughts and her voice grows stronger. I mean, you're right. We need to get out of here. Turns out her dad was part of the group. Amelia grabs a few more books and tucks them under her arm. What are you doing? I'm acquiring proof should we wish to alert the proper authorities about the Cloaked Brotherhood. Good idea. I think those will be enough, though. Let's go. The group nods. We slip out of the room. I follow the group through a corridor and we navigate to the exit. The sky is a canvas of darkness when we exit the house. Bright stars prick holes in the inky blanket of the night. I let out a soft breath of relief. We made it. Zack marches ahead of us. He approaches the first guard we find. The guard stiffens as Zack approaches, taking in his black coat and scarf. Can I help you? Yes. We discovered something that might be interesting to you. <laughs> oh? There's a band of dangerous mercenaries living in this area. They're called the Cloaked Brotherhood, known for taking on jobs which hurt innocent people. We've just discovered their home base. The guard looks surprised. I've never heard of this group. That's the point. He seems dismissive and skeptical. It's pretty hard to believe that a dangerous organization has been in this town the whole time without our knowledge. Maybe that's because you suck at your job. They don't operate openly. Still, the guard seems unconvinced. Zack shoves the three books Amy grabbed from the ledger around him. Here's a list of some of their targets, and these are just a few of them. There's a whole room full of even more names and missions. The guard rolls his eyes as he opens the first book, but his jaw tightens as he flips through the pages. These are death dates. Yes. He, he loudly continues to flip through the book, then opens the top a second. Look how far back these dates and names go. They've been operating for a while. The guard snaps the book shut, his mouth frowning in obvious distaste. Where did you say you found this? His voice is hard and his eyes steely. Zack points to the house. There's a hidden doorway behind a curtain in the front room. You'll need reinforcements. I'll look into this. If all of this is real, then there are serious crimes being committed. <laughs> His demeanor changes completely from the bored, listless man we approach. His footsteps are brisk and sharp as he seeks out his fellow guards. Kara is still clinging to her book. She clutches it to her chest. Zack notices Kara's expression. Come on, let's go to the inn. Uh, she furrows her brows. What if someone sees you? It doesn't matter anymore. The scouts will return to headquarters to discover an army of guards storming the place. I'll be the last of their worries. That's true. Kara sounds like she's still in the daze as Zack steers her toward the end. The rest of us follow silently behind. When we arrive in the end, we hurry upstairs, walking faster than normal. Zack doesn't stop to make eye contact with any of the other patrons, even though a few of us do a double take. A few of them do a double take. Car goes into her room. Zack follows her and swings the door shut behind him. Apparently, I'm also in this room, but it catches on the way, back of his heel, which stops him from closing all the way. He must have a one-track mind because he doesn't seem to notice. Are you sure you want to do this? Sex? I, I, I don't know. I don't think that's for you, man. Car uh, takes a deep breath. Yes. She closes her eyes. No. Her face twists. But I need to. I need to know. Take your time. Whenever you're ready. She nods, not meeting his eyes. We should go. We should leave, but Leanna and Amelia stand on the other side of me, rooted to the spot. Even the pongo is still in silent. After what seems to be an eternity, Kara flips through the book, biting her lip. There's a lengthy pause. I can see her eyes flicker across the page. She freezes. A visible weight seems to leave from Kara's body. The book goes limp in her hand, hanging wide open from her fingertips. I don't even think she realizes it's still there. 
At least now I know. Heartbreak flickers across Leanna's face. Oh, Kara, I'm so sorry. My chest gives a painful tug. Are you all right? Kara nods. I'm fine. But her voice is tight. She tries to put on a smile, but can't hide the pain from her face. Zack takes a step forward. He touches her arm, and something in Kara's expression changes. I'm fine. Really. I know. Kara's eyes begin to shimmer with tears. She shakes her head. I'm... I know. Gently, he folds her into her arms. The ledger falls to the ground with a soft thud. I... Her voice cracks as she tries to hold back the tears. Zach, uh, Zach's arms wrap tightly around her. She clings to him and she can't hold back any longer. They stand there together, Kara's body shuddering from her deep sobs as Zach holds her, as strong as steady as a rock. Yeah. My heart caves. I want to help, but I don't know what to do. Leanna touches my arm. We should go. Yeah, we should. We should have gone a long time ago. I nod. Giving them, giving them some space is maybe the best thing I can do for her and Zach at this point. Leanna and Amelia slowly walk away. I reach out and gently shut the door uh, after following them. Uh, following after them. We settle downstairs at a table while we wait. Leanna casts worried glances upstairs. I feel for both Kara and Zach. Yeah, Vayer and Zach have had some intense history. I guess they both ran in the same circle and was looked after by Damon. Amy nods. Ultimately, Vayer was unsatisfied with the group, and to complete his initiation into the Cloaked Brotherhood, he had his team killed. Wait, how did you know that was his initiation? Amy fixes me with her big eyes. <laughs> Zach expressed that the Brotherhood's initiations require a hefty sacrifice. For Zach, it was to spill the blood of the innocents. It would stand to reason that the Brotherhood would have offered a similar mission to Vare. That makes what happened even more horrific. How could he just turn on his team like that? Hopefully this is all worth it to give Kara some closure. Yeah. Having an idea of what happened isn't the same as reality confirming it. The conversation falls so close. There really, there's really not much to say after what's happened. Finally, after what feels like an hour, Kazak and Kara come downstairs and from the room. We all shoot to a stand. Hey, how are you feeling? Kara hastily wipes her face. It still hurts, but it's a little better now. She gives us a small, weak smile. Thank you guys for coming with me. Lana smiles back. Of course. A few other people from the inn send us curious glances. Some patrons squint at Zach. We should get out of here. A shiver runs down my spine. Yeah, I agree. All the muttering and staring is starting to make me feel uneasy. Not only that, but this place is still technically dangerous. I'd really rather not have another encounter with the Cloak Brotherhood. Not wasting any more time, we gather what we need and leave. When we are far enough from the city, we finally stop to make camp. The crescent moon hangs low in the clouds. Zach prepares dinner, and we all sit around a campfire. A small fire. The pongo huddles close to Kara. She absentmindedly pats his head and gives him a hug. It's silent for a while, with only the sounds of flame crackling and crickets chirping in the distance. Even though Zach's cooking is always delicious, I find myself unable to concentrate on the taste. Kara chews slowly, thoughtfully. A part of me wonders if I should say something and ask how she's doing, but maybe it'd be better to give her some space. Kara clears her throat. Thanks for everything you've done for me. I know you all didn't have to go with me to find the Cloaked Brotherhood, and it means a lot to me that you did. Of course. There's no way we'd let you go through that alone. Leanna and Kara share an expression of silent gratitude. I'm glad I finally know what happened to my dad. She breathes out a big sigh. It's a bit crazy, but my greatest worry wasn't just that he might be dead, but that maybe he wasn't and he never came back for me. Kara. She smiles, and for the first time it looks natural. A bit sad, but also relieved. It's okay. I know that he would never have abandoned me. Our separation was by force. There's no changing the past. At least now I can move on to bigger and brighter things. She turns to Zack and her expression softens. What about you? Running into Vayer was unexpected, and it sounded like you had a lot of history. Zack looks up. He hesitates and then lets out a low sigh. He was like a brother to me. We both lost our families. 
both were orphans. We were both taken in by Damon. Damon was your mentor? Zack nods. He was the leader of our band of mercenaries, and like a father to me. He taught me everything I know, pushed me to become the best I could be, and showed me how to survive. He pauses as he stares into the fire. Vera and I were the youngest. I was around 14 when I joined the group, and Vera had only been there a year longer. We bonded pretty quickly. His voice trails off as he furrows his brow. At least, I thought we did. I've been thinking about what he said, and I wonder if he's right. Maybe Damon did favor me. Even if that's true, it doesn't mean he deserved to die for it. No, of course not. Nothing can excuse what Vayer did. Then his voice is gentle. What happened? Zack pauses as he collects his thoughts. We've been hired to transport a load of weapons. It was supposed to be an easy gig. One we'd all done many times before. Vera was our scout, and Damon and I guarded the trunk as we took passage on the crystal rail. Biggs and Jess were stationed in other crystal rail cars to spot any suspicious passengers. You motherfucker snuck in a Final Fantasy reference. Damon sent Vera out to make his round on the crystal rail, as he had done a few times already. This time, it took longer than usual and we were worried that he'd encounter some trouble. It's normally Biggs and Wedge, but it's it's just so funny that they snuck that in there. Damon had me search for Vera and give him back up if needed. I walked around the crystal rail, through the cars, asking the rest of our team if they saw him. No one did. And I couldn't find him when I got back to Damon. Zack pauses, pain ripples across his face, his eyes haunted and bleak. He was dead. His voice is flat. I didn't have time to look at the bodies. The men who killed him were still there, so I jumped out of the crystal rail before they could get me too. His face curdles in disgust. I assumed Fair died with them. I mourned for him. I... His hands curled in the fist. Kara reaches out and touches his arm. He flinches and then blinks at her. His eyes refocus and he turns away, taking a deep breath. They never came after you? He shakes his head. They probably assume I died jumping out of the crystal rail. After I recovered, I tried to seek out what had happened. But for years, I couldn't find a damn thing. He pauses. I didn't know it was the Cloak Brotherhood. And that Vare could have done that, or would have joined them. I lost everything that day, for the second time in my life. I try to imagine how it would feel to mourn for someone I cared about, only to find out years later that they were alive and had betrayed me. The thought makes my stomach turn. Lana shifts in the quiet, but Kara speaks next, her voice low. And that's when you became the Deathslinger, isn't it? Zack lifts his head. Yeah. The reports from the Mage Guild, they said you would take on suicide missions? Ah, oh, God! Missions kept my mind from thinking. I was good at what I did and I had nothing to lose. Shadows flitter across Zack's face and the group quiets. Leanna looks down as Kara places a hand on Zack's arm. He looks at her and the shadows disappear from his eyes. As their eyes meet, Kara's cheeks begin to color and Zack cracks a hint of a smile. But I don't need to be the Death Slinger anymore. No, it's funnier when you were. Kara blinks and then looks at Zack hopefully. Oh? He shrugs. Uh, he looks like he's struggling to get the words out. A slight blush dusts his cheeks and he coughs. I... found a reason to live. Gross. See, how about you take that somewhere else, please? <laughs> I'm happy for you, Zach. Group hug. Alright, fine. I'm gonna embarrass them. I giggle and flick my wrist at him. Oh, stop it, you. I'm blushing. Ugh. Zach turns and glares at me. I didn't mean you, jackass. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't realize that that was a. Oh, okay. That, that that was that flick. I thought it was like a like a. Oh, you you two. How about you go do your thing? No, it's a. Oh, kind of wrist flick. Got it. Uh, hey, there's hey, there's the Zach I know. He crosses his arms but looks at us with appreciation. This man has a very strange way of showing his affection. We should get some sleep. It's been a long day. Uh, he's telling me. I nod. Yeah, I agree. Every limb and muscle suddenly feels sluggish, and I realize how much I push myself today. The same exhaustion seems to ripple throughout the rest of the group. I remember my bedroll and smack it a few times, puffing it out as best as I can. Kara was the first one to sleep. Today's event must have really exhausted her. In her sleep, her face looks smooth and peaceful. I hope she's able to get a good night's rest. Zack's bedroll shifts a little closer to her. Mm. While he gets closer, I hear a tiny squeak. The pongo pokes his head out from Kara's bedroll and blinks at Zack. 
And through my haze of exhaustion, I see Amelia stretch out her hand. Her bracelets shimmer, and the embers of the fire snuff out. Great. Yeah, Amelia, you. how about you just go be forever alone over there, please? Thank you. My eyes droop shut as I fall asleep. All right. I'm actually going to end, like, my whole batch here. Um, and then I'll probably continue this in like the next two or three days or so and do another one. Hopefully by that point, I actually have vodka and uh, I can continue drinking. But uh, thank you all so much for joining me for this one. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, go ahead and leave a like on the video. If you're brand new to the channel, hey, hit the subscribe button. I do this stuff all the time. And uh, leave a comment down below to let me know what you thought about this episode of Crystalline. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye. Good night. Man, work is gonna suck in five hours.